Oh, nice dog. Oh. Hello, my friends of Middle Earth, and welcome to the Beyond Xander's channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are on the map Forts of Brunin 2 in a 1v1 video commentary between good and evil. We have the white Isengard player, the white hand, Fries, and his opponent, the yellow gunner player, Burger. And this also will answer the question, which food do you prefer more? Are you more like a burger guy or do you like fries more? The Uruks are very fast. They will be able to, you know, find those soldiers quite easily. Hobbit will be throwing some rocks, but against the Warch and the Uruks, you don't simply stand a chance. You don't. In the meantime, I mean, he's not even trying to fight this. He's going to use the Alvin Wood around this location. That's pretty good, you know, this way. The enemy will lose their leadership bonuses and soldiers will get more tanky and with the help of the hobbit they can actually even try to creep this that's pretty nice in the meantime Eisen's eco is obviously pretty much untouched he has a uruk pit the first uruk is out the second uruk just came out too but it looks like he will not even try to contest this creep farm in blacksmith opening for gondor okay maybe can he do it can he do it psh, 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 psh. No, in the money. Oh, in Gondor takes it all. Okay, level two soldier. That's oh, that's a nightmare to deal with, you know. At this part of the game, in order to deal with this, you actually need to bring some berserkers, you know. That's the only possible way because this level two with the Hobbit being around them, almost level three, will actually you know kill easily a full battalion of Uruks. Not even close, you know, not even close. But in the meantime. Gondor is about to lose all the farms outside, which means he will be losing the food bonus. And now he has only two, which means he has to invest for each Gondorite 760. That's a lot of money, you know? But he will be getting some money. Or? Oh, okay. God. Eisen took it all. That's pretty good for Eisen. That's nice. I like it. But he needs to take the money and he needs to run away, you know, because he can't fight this. The Hobbit will hit very hard, level 3, level 3 soldier. And even at, in a 3v1 situation, 3v2 situation with the Hobbit around, the Uruks will lose. But Eisen's piece is not looking too bad. He has a Uruk pit level 2 now. The pikemen will be recruited next to counter the horses. But in the meantime, this Uruk was able to destroy the auto farm from Gondor. And Gondor's eco is not looking very good. And this might be the advantage Isengard player needs to kind of get into this game. Warchan has been used on this Uruks. He was able to steal the money too. The, Uruk, the soldiers are very, very tanky, almost level 4. The knights can actually trample this. There are no pikemen around. And you see the soldiers are quite tanky, but they can't run away from the Uruk. So they need backup. But I think the backup is arriving very soon. The knights of Gondor are here to save the day. Heat is gonna be used, it's gonna be delaying the power point from Gondor to reach the Alvin Alliance. Level 4 soldier Gondor, uh, Gondor soldier I mean, and beautiful trampoline coming. With this, the soldiers will be able to survive. And that's pretty big because you need soldiers eventually later on in this matchup against pikemen, and normally you need to build up the barracks, but now that you have a level 4 soldier, you don't really have to do this. And Gondor was able to steal some of the money, that's good, but the creep was taken by the Uruk Hai. The banner carrier was able to survive. He's running wild, but the Vorks are chasing. Pikeman in position, so that means the mill should be safe. Also here, full base for Aizen. Not still not a very good eco, but with the knights creeping around the bottom left, uh, you know, corner of the map, Forts of Brunin 2, it should be no problemo. Okay, so what you can even do is you can capture this outside, uh, you know, outpost, and you can build some tree farms on it. And because it's like in the corner, Isengard might not check it. It's like a risky thing, but no risk, no fun, no risk, no reward. So you can build three farms there and it's going to kind of boost you up your eco quite a bit, you know. Eisen has good map control, kind of. Um, what you need is Vork Riders in order to deal with the level 4 soldier. Because one or two pikemen, uh, one or two berserker won't be enough to do this. Creep secured. Gondor is collecting power points like crazy. We have no more creeps left beside this one at the top side. That's going to be the last creep remaining because this is about to be taken down. And when he takes this one, which he will be surely able to do, he can also creep this one quite pretty much uncontested. And that's going to bring him a big step closer to the Elven Alliance Summon, which of course are, is a big counter um, to the Pikemen. Or not Elven Alliance, the Grey Company. The Grey Company this, okay? Level 2 Uruk. But I think he will be able to find them. Oh, that's very unfortunate. 
it's gonna be painful if you lose the level two but it's gonna happen but one trample is all it takes boys level three soldier level four knight i mean the forge blitz now no heavy armor no shields just yet stable level two he has only recruited two knights of gondor uh, so far and this blacksmith is level two he's buying heavy armor first so in order to rush the beast of aizen you actually need the shields okay the shields will kind of make your endurance versus towers especially quite big but you can still rush it with heavy armor you need to be going front to back so you can't really go in the middle and go to the uruk pit because the towers will shred you right Ray company has been special summoned into the alvin wood the knights are able to deal heavy damage and this is a big push by the way beautiful heal healing coming because destroying those furnaces now when they're level two will delay the level two quite a bit and this piece will be kind of squishy for the next couple of minutes you know because it requires lots of time for the furnace to hit level two and then level three and each level will make the structure way more tanky and you destroying them at level one is a big thing you know okay armory um you need a lot banner is the most important thing first so you can kind of save up your units if you can um at least save one unit from the battalion that's the requirement gondor is creeping and dominating the minimap dominating everything two settlements but isengard doesn't really need that much you know two lumber mills outside can still be quite uh, big for aizen to kind of get into the mid game and mid game of aizen is very strong so you need to get lords on the field and hope that you will level them up to level five and then your all out is going to be quite quite strong a level five soldier by the way guys so you can give him blades and heavy armor and he's going to be super hard to be dealt with even has been killed no outpost control from gondor nor from isengard and we get to see more and more pikemen and you need more than that actually you know because this player knows how to play with the horses he has now the stable level two the shields of knights purchased and a level five knight with the shields and heavy armor will have a crazy endurance so it will take you lots of tower shots to kill them that's why you need pikemen is a big counter to them level five soldier lourdes has been recruited finally beautiful but he will wasted war chant here otherwise those level five units will be able to kill them lourdes needs to be level three at least three knights of condor incoming a level two soldier over here and a level five soldier over here this might be the final push actually the first and final push with the soldiers lourdes keep shooting all the time but the knights of condor are simply way too tanky so you want to shoot down the soldiers that's what you need to do look at the soldiers going you know they are very tanky with heavy armor and levels and when they get to hit they will hit like a truck beautiful micro with the pikemen lords keep shooting at them all the time but the knights are still quite healthy heal is all about to be available they don't even need to go back to the beast they can just keep pushing keep rushing and keep taking down those furnaces level two with industry on it big healing coming beautiful heal and the level five is still remaining on the field power points are rising for gondor he has four point something resource in the bank he might save up for ganov or he might just skip ganov and get straight up to the eagle special summon which isengard can't deal with as we are talking beautiful cripple to finish one of the knights and lords hitting level three that's the only good thing about this entire situation and he has also one lumber mill remaining on the field 5000 for you know gondor and isengard is more than broke he has no units beside pikemen and he has only lords he's far away from getting his own wizard up on the field or from recruiting combos you know like the pikemen crossbowman combo i think that's what you need here and what you also need is lords level five pikemen are demolishing it um beautiful positioning with pikemen but i think the knights are just too highly leveled you know high levels plus upgrades finish him oh can he get away use the spike man use the spike man cut him off cut him off oh is he watching yeah he's watching actually uh <laughs> there is lords 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 one more hit lords finish them off that's good but in the meantime another rush is happening two knights of gondor one of them being level six by the way 
and we have seen this kind of player is able to deal incredible amount of damage with the knights of condor and there comes the great company special summon ladies and gentlemen the pikemen with no heavy armor even with warchan they will kind of get melted land will be placed and um from aizen and will be covered by gondor uh nah, actually gondor was placing land and aizen will be covering this there is a lurz which has no protection and there is a Gandalf. so lurz's goal here is to obviously just cripple Gandalf if he can it's gonna be pretty nice but he's poor the question is even if you cripple him do you have what it takes to kill him because your warchan is on cooldown unless you fight on the tainted line of yours you will have no leadership that means the visa plus is gonna be more than enough to one shot all your remaining pikemen uruk pit level three quite big production speed buff so pikemen will be you know produced in 16 seconds which is pretty decent actually and without the works as you can see and tell it's very hard to contest the map control at this point of the game you need mobility you need speed and because you can't even just sim simply send pikes forward and hope that they can do the job for you because there is a gandalf now who can you know kind of use your pikes against you by killing them and farming power points remember gondor is the best power point summon in the late game and now he's at three power points in total he needs three more for the eagles pikeman level two blades will be given to them Gandalf is coming with two more, three more knights. Lots of knights upon the field. Pikemen are chilling over here. Um, and I hope Isengard is paying attention to this pikeman. Yes, he does. Because there comes Mifrandir, the white rider. Lourdes has to be protector of the white tower. Blast is incoming, but the pikemen were able to dodge. Most of them, actually. The last two remaining mills. One of them is about to be destroyed, but he's running into the pikemen. And that's going to be a big oof. You can't fight like a horse can't fight against pikemen if they have level two and bleeds that's not possible Unlike unless you have unless you have like they are like level 10 or something you know and you have like theory and glorious charge on, or some shenanigans happening to your horse he needs to have like a crazy armor boost to withstand the damage of the pikemen so basically don't try it's a hard counter matchup situation so pikes their only purpose is to counter mounted heroes and every calf unit in the game that's their specialty and they are very good at that too you know outpost captured by gondor going now for the archer range realizing okay i will need something else than only horses because my opponent is obviously just countering me by recruiting lots of pikemen so i need something to deal with their pikemen because isengard is slowly getting back into the game you know making some combos getting some furnaces almost level three that's pretty decent too and obviously lots of level two uh, level three structures here for uh, gondor marketplace is incoming too very good very good four power points almost and uh isengard has five power points so in this matchup you don't really need uh, the free freezing rain because he's only gana leadership the, the, you know the thing you need to ask yourself the only time you need freezing rain is if your opponent has more leadership than you do and that's just not the case when we are talking about Gondor, he has only gain of leadership for 50% more armor and 100% more combat experience, but that's all about it. Your Lords gives you almost the same value. No armor, but you have Warchan too. So with Warchan plus Lords, you basically have more leadership than Ganov. And for that reason, you don't need to negate their leadership because you win the 1v1 anyway. So your army against this army, you should be able to win. Pikeman, is he paying attention to them? Uh, a little bit too late, one of them was able to survive. And Gondor captured the second outpost too. So Isengard is kind of present and not actually really. He has like a level 3 lumber mill. I think this lumber mill has been remaining on the field now since the beginning of the game, which also is one of the tools that kept Isengard in the game for so long because his eco was being devastated over and over again by the Gondor player. Level 6 Gondor Knights. With Gandalf around them, they will level up twice as quickly too. And again, each level you take, you gain. Oh! Can he do it? cancel it okay he would miss him okay two combos with forge bleeds heavy armor venom and fire arrows so now what you need three combos is to save up for saruman so three combos i think it's enough you need some more pikemen i would like to leave at least four pikemen in the castle in the base you know because a lot of horses are incoming and this player is very good with microing them you know he doesn't feed them was it, actually he was able to keep most of his horses alive throughout the entire game and it's really fun to watch a player who is able to do this you know 
Also on the on the land. Great company has been used. Lourdes is coming to threaten Gandalf, but lots of stuff happening simultaneously. Lourdes has to be careful. One more hit, level five. It's gonna be pretty big. The combos are rotating now to to kill the Great Company. And also Field of Fires has been picked. There comes the Lightning Swall from Gandalf. Beautiful catch, level six and a half Gandalf. And Lourdes is coming, and for that reason, Gandalf has to disengage. You see lots of multitasking is happening at the same time in this game. And that's the only thing Gandalf has to be paying attention about. Just avoid Lourdes at all costs. Because if he cripples you, you will not be able to move for 25 seconds, which is enough time for the fast Isengard units to get back, you know, to you with Warchant and Lourdes leadership. They will burst you down. In the meantime, another rush is happening while Isengard is busy killing the Great Company. Two more knights are destroying the level two furnaces. That's big push. Big push, big punishment. Bad trample. <laughs> Blast and he missed. Beautiful disengage here from the young Isengard player. But he's gonna be able to e study some of the remaining combos. Lourdes was not in position, and you can't be off position against this player. And Ganov will be once again able to dodge his opponent Lourdes. Maybe Boromir Faramir could be nice because I believe Gondor has a lot of money. Like, obviously, he has almost full population. He has marketplace. You can see the animation on the blacksmiths. He has basically 90% of the map with double outpost. So he should not have any money trouble whatsoever. But Eagles will be available. Now, with the Eagles being able to deal bonus damage like crazy to heroes, you can actually burst down the Lords very fast. And that's all they need to do. Even if you die afterwards, just kill Lourdes. But Saruman, ladies and gentlemen, has been recruited. Now we have not one, but two wizards on the field at the same time. And Ganov? Ganov? Cripple him! Oh, maybe he had the chance. We have some rangers up on the field. One Gonda Archer, three rangers. But no damage leadership. That's, this is a situation in which you would need something like Boromir or... You need Faramir against Lourdes or Saruman. Faramir is one arrow, actually dealing bonus damage to heroes. And Rangers way more mobile than those combos, but these combos have crazy leadership. Like they have 50% armor, 40% armor from Saruman and 60% more damage from Lourdes. Plus Warchant in all out fights. Oh, nice catch. In the meantime though, like I don't, I don't think, does he have heal? Um, it's a mistake to focus down the Lords, in my opinion, with the Eagles, because Lords already crippled. I think it would be much better to kill Saruman, which will give you more power points, obviously. And also, it's going to be more expensive for your opponent to revive him. Land has been placed to cover this. And run, heal, run, he run. Oh, he could have saved him, actually. But I think he was not paying attention. He was trying to rush the bees. He gave up on his Ganov. But I think he was able to save him if he would use heal and just disengage, because the duration of the cripple was already gone okay so lots of level three blacksmiths incoming very soon the eco will look phenomenal so unless you can do something out of the momentum like you basically guys you need at this point isengard has to kill has to win many battles to win the war you know so now he killed ganov and that's the momentum you, you are trying to look for so without ganov the pikes will be absolutely enough to defend your bees and you can just take down the outpost fireball beautiful i think gonna not paying attention range over here too arches inside the outpost um and we okay we have finally warped it up on the field that's good isengard has uh, still population available there comes the speechcraft lots of units inside the castle inside the outpost shooting like crazy gotta destroy the statue first that's gonna be the plan um, lots of firepower, beautiful by building this. In the meantime, he's rushing the bees. He's rushing the bees, but he will be able to destroy one furnace in exchange to lose one of his Gondor Knights. Um, I don't think you can defend this. Oh, he stole them with one HP! What a play from Saruman! Okay, that's very good actually. Can Saruman get away from this? We, have, we also hear Lords back in the business. Work has to be recruited with the field fires and also the industry being available. Um, you know, Isengard is all of a sudden not poor anymore. He has actually enough money to keep making more units and that's exactly what he should be doing, you know. Invest the money as soon as possible. Outpost captured by the Isengard player. 
Lourdes trying to make it to the army. In the worst case, you can actually put Saruman inside the outpost, you know, that he will be untargetable. Great company, there's not much time left remaining. The level 3 Lambert Mill will be finally taken down. Boromir has been recruited, even Pippin has been recruited, Faramir and the three captains of Gondor. <laughs> This guy is Peregrine of the Tower Guard. With level 7, he will be even able to deal more damage. And with the Rangers, it looks like the mission South and Italian. Lourdes, level 5. Level 6 will unlock the pillage, which means even greater amount of resources for the Isengard player. But there is a trebuchet, I believe, right? No, what knocked them down? I'm not sure. Does he have catapults? Yeah, but he's gonna have some trebuchet very soon. Like, two more trebuchet, you need four in total to get the Siege Works to level 2. That will unlock the level 2 and then you can buy the Firestone for increased damage like crazy. It's, it's gonna hit like a truck basically. Level 3 Furnace, it's gonna be a big ouchie losing this. Will hurt your eco big time. They keep shooting and Isengard has to kind of react to this. Look, in those situations, that's the reason why you would need Warks. Because with Warc Riders, like two Warc Riders with War Channel in the hole, you can easily defend this. There is like no Tower Guard, nothing that can... They can't switch formation either. A bad land, there is no need to land. You would one-shot them anyway, I believe, with the war chant. And because now when you use land first, your opponent will cover this. And then now he has a close land next to your castle in which he will have... Oh, but he got crippled. I see you. I think you can kill him in a second, dude. War chant plus Lord's leadership? Are you kidding me? He's way too scared of the blast. But you just gotta take the risk. There is no need to heal. I believe you will die anyway. He's healing him, but I don't think that's gonna do anything about this. And Ganoff... Dwight is kind of the dead. Parami over here. Um, and in the meantime, Saruman is back to full HP. He has two ballistas up on the field. And maybe he can even switch. Dude, this game is actually kind of crazy. In the meantime, though, Gondor keeps rushing again. He's rotating to the outpost, but there is a um, trebuchet. And also archers inside the outpost shooting, dealing crazy amount of damage. Lourdes, level 7, that's pretty big. But in the meantime, half of the bees from Isengard has been absolutely shattered in the into pieces boys though Aizen is rooted into the castle of Gondor but he's about like he lost he has only two more level three furnaces remaining that's all, all he has and with the level one furnaces the base defense will be so low that like four knights of Gondor can easily crush the complete castle by themselves two ballista keep shooting the part of the wall will be broken very soon we have a lot of spam of the knights at this point we have um, six power points after the Eagles, which are, by the way, available. And um, Isengard is up to almost 16 power points. So he needs only around four and a half power points to unlock the ancient demon, the Balrog of Morgoth. Lourdes trying to make it to the army. But if you see him exposed like this, Gondor has vision on him. Yeah, there comes the Eagle Summon. Yeah, you can't be exposed like this. You need to have like a... Okay. Lord's dying, giving lots of power points. The Ballista exposed, unprotected, will also be taken down. Power points are rising now for Gondor. But losing Lord will also give power points to Isengard. And he's only a quarter away from 17. Um, however, his eco is once again not looking very good. The Eagles will try to fish even more power points by killing those Vorks. And he doesn't even build up the Vork Pit anymore. The Vork Pit is essential. And the reason is here, okay? You later on eventually will get to Balrog Summon. Balrog, all himself, can't finish the castle off. But you can't deal a significant amount of damage to the castle. Then only one or maximum two structures will be left remaining. So you, with the Balrog doing this phenomenal amount of damage, need still some backup to finish, to get the job done, okay? That's why you need to send like two, three Vork Riders to actually finish the remaining structures to crush the entire castle but with this map control Gondor should be easily able to rebuy this actually his money is not looking that good but because he was spending again lots of money into reviving Gandalf keep recruiting more and more knights and also of course making trebuchet okay we have an explosive mine over here but there is a trebuchet there are three tre trebuchet inside the castle of Gondor he is once again rotating to the main castle of Aizen and it looks like they are looking for like a castle swap. Which both players don't have the money to buy the castle from their opponents. Fireball is able to one-shot the catapult. 
Nice though. Oh, beautiful. Attempt was there. He was pressing the X button on his keyboard. He was attempting it. Uh, land. Where is the cover? Isengard doesn't even cover the land. And Saruman is dying. We have 13 power points. He got so many power points out of the tide. He has now EUD, but, but you know, Isengard has Balrog. Pretty much at the same time. The ultimate summons are available, but there comes the Balrog of Morgoth. The demon of the ancient world. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. In the meantime, EOD has been used to kill the army because Gandalf got crippled and he didn't want to lose his Gandalf. Beautiful breath fire. Again, you can't one-shot the level 3 production buildings anymore. EOD is incoming, but I think this two battalions, one battalion of EOD, or even two, can't really kill Balrog. Balrog can just walk over them, and because he's made of fire, his presence all alone, his Haki, will be able to kill the EOD. In the meantime, though, the outpost, unprotected, will be going down. The base for Aizen is looking good, but the map, we can't say about the map, the same thing. He has only his own castle remaining with level, mostly level 1 furnaces. Breath fire, and yeah, one structure remaining. Imagine it like two walk riders. I mean, yeah, Gondor has good money. But it's still painful to have to invest 5,000 just to buy the castle. You don't even fill up the castle at this point, you know? Okay. Oh, he's sending some Vorks in it. Can he do it? We have the Cloud Break, which can stun them, by the way. But they are level 3, they can't be stunned. I mean, this tree will not be able to finish it. He's trying, though. <laughs> he's trying hard. But Gondor saw it coming. Paramir, level 3. And we have a couple of more Rangers. But remember, he lost the Archery, so he won't be able to produce any more Rangers anytime soon. Um, Isengard is reviving his heroes level 7 will take you 2 minutes and 30 seconds and this dude was level 7 too it will take you 2 minutes to get your heroes back in on the field and um, in an all out fight i'm still thinking that isengard is very strong you know because he has a uh, triple leadership with lord saruman and also warchant and also he has eventually the power yeah he has power points for the devastation pick up devastation use it beautiful blast from the young wizard ganov hitting level eight and a half Lords around this location, there comes the lightning sword on the units, but he will cancel it after seeing Lords showing up. Now, demolishing structures not very valuable at this point of the game anymore, because your opponent has already unlocked every single power point from his spellbook. Like, there are certain things you gotta be doing at the early stages of the game, as for example, not taking bad fights, or managing your resources wisely, or not feeding power points by demolishing your structures in time. In the late game, you have more money, your opponent has already power points, so you don't really do this anymore. In late game, it's all about macro, you know, kind of keeping up the focus in the game and being able to outperform your opponent in long terms. But most of the games can actually be decided within the first, I would say, five to eight minutes, you know. When you play it flawlessly, you can commit to the mistakes of your opponent and these games never don't have to last it long even though the, the goal of the 2.22 the patch 2.2 is actually make the games more entertaining and also more interesting and more close kill him fireball 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 nice okay actually that's good there comes cloud break you need to use palantium to keep up the movement speed because the the horses will actually demolish everything they can even destroy the uruk pit for the first time in this game six power points collected Ganov is still remaining on the field, keep that in mind. He's gonna use the heal, level 4 knights, level 5 knights, level 3 knights, level 2 knights. Very tanky units, very very tanky. And because of the Cloud Break, these units are moving so slowly. Keep in mind that Cloud Break, besides making them stun, besides stunning them if they are level 1 or 2, also reduces their movement speed and armor by a significant amount, okay? 30 person armor, you basically move at third less, you know? 4,000 for Gondor. Isengard has only 1,000 in the bank. It's a very poor. Gondor has Ganav almost level 9. That's pretty decent too. Vorks um, trampling the Great Company. They can draw the swords, and that's exactly what they're going to be doing. There comes the Freezing Rain from Isengard to negate the leadership from the statue and from the Ganav. At the outpost, they have, of course, more leadership. You know, the statue gives you also uh, more armor, more damage, and more combat experience. That comes to Fireball. Beautiful hit. And he has only one more trebuchet remaining on, around this area. But he has a lot of firepower. So you, you can't really underestimate this. 
Vorgen ist on cooldown. I don't know about this commitment. If Vorgen is on cooldown, there comes the Palantir. He's killing the only remaining trebuchet after the trebuchet lands another phenomenal shot. It, it, you know, in this situation, focus on the heroes is very important. As Faramir is able to show his quality by killing Lourdes. And you know what it means? Lourdes dead, no more danger for Ganalf. And he's coming in clutch. Boom, chakalaka. Level 9. Now, the Saruman is exposed. He's using the Vizaplast, I mean, the, you know, Warchan on the level 5 to save them. That's pretty good, actually. And because of the Warchan, Gondor won't commit. In the meantime, though, look, Vorks are taking over the map, you know. That's exactly what he should be doing it in the mid to late game. Uh, he, it, he can still work. Remember, AOD and Balrog have been used minutes ago. They have 9 minutes cooldown in total. So, there is a counterplay potential. You need map control. And then Balrog can finish off the game. Because there are two broken parts, which Gondor, of course, can repair if he wants to. But it's going to be quite expensive. It's cost, it costs you 2,000 each. Alright, there comes the Lightning Sword. He will be able to catch them too. That's good. Level 3, no chance. Lightning Sword, crazy strong. One unit remaining, level 9 in a quarter. Will we be able, potentially, to see Ganov hitting level 10, boys? Take this. Look, the one pikeman damage to Ganov, though. Like, he dealt 10% of his HP. You know, not bad. For one single pikeman against a mighty Maya. Alright, so Gondor is taking over the map. Once again. Saruman, big mistake. Big mistake. You can't really commit to this. Oh, one arrow. You gotta be zooming around with the Palantiro. But you wanna you wanna wait for your Lourdes. Lourdes is here. Lourdes. And Ganav saw him. Ganav saw him. But that means he has no protection for Saruman. Lourdes is trying to defend the beast. He's gonna use the Carnage on his horses. Carnage dealing, giving you splash damage, giving you the chance to hit more than one target at once. Lourdes hitting level 8, but in the meantime, he's trying to dance around the rosy, dance around the rosy, beautiful micro from Isengard, but it's not gonna be enough, and there comes the level 10, boom, son, you shall not pass. Use land, maybe cover the land. Or oh, maybe if you would cover the land, you would be able to kill him. Because I think he has no more heal, right? Does he? He has heal, actually. Okay. Oh, warning arrow. Heal is incoming. We nerfed the heal, so it's not going to heal up to full HP anymore. EOD is available. Balrog is available. At the same time, Lord using Carnage for the second time. Lord is sitting like a truck. Lord is doing it. Lord can not finish off the battalion. And once again, the base is being rushed from downside. Gondor is playing for his life, okay? That's the commander Denethor needed. That would be the son, the favorite of son of Denethor. The Vorks, they are straight up going to the castle of Gondor. But Gondor sees that obviously will invest the money into repairing the structures. But what Eisen can do is use the Balrog right here and breath fire around this location. There comes the EOD, it's gonna look like a base swap, but remember, Gondor has two outposts remaining, so even if he loses the castle, he will not lose the game, but we can't say the same about Isengard. Isengard has not the money to even buy this castle after destroying this. Towering up like crazy, knowing that once the timer of the Balrog is gone, the towers will melt those Walk riders, he is trying to repair the structure, trying to fight until the very end, but he has no more army left, no more hope left. Against the power of Gondor, there can't be no victory. And Fries has been defeated. Burger is our new favorite food. GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.